Hello folks and welcome. So today's video is going to be about Zorin 16.3 and uh, I'm going to basically um, preference this by saying this is generally meant for new users but uh, I understand a lot of Linux um, users want to maybe switch their distributions or possibly Microsoft Windows users are thinking about Linux and uh, Zorin is a great segue into that. Let me first get this out of the way. I'm just going to give you system information my way and uh, there's lots of ways to get system info, but Zorin OS 16.3, the latest installment from Zorin as of a couple of four days ago. But uh, today I'm going to talk about the XFCE desktop. They also make a GNOME desktop, and today I'm filming in 1920 by 1080 so you can adjust your gear player accordingly. I don't recommend watching my videos on mobile devices. The screens are too small usually. But uh, you can also watch my videos on your big screen TVs if you have a YouTube app and uh, you can follow along there. But in either case, the XFCE desktop is also more forgiven on older computers, but you can certainly run them on modern hardware. That's what I'm pointing out right here. So I'm going to use my first uh, tip of the day and use Alt and F4. It just closes any window. I'll be giving you tips in the file manager, the web browser, about software, giving you the, the package count and how much software there is available approximately and also tips on how to create stuff like that in about seven to 10 seconds. These are web-based icons, and that's a simple logout key that you can not only place anywhere on your screen, but also on your panel bar. I have one sitting right here. It's the same one. Show you how to create one of these in about 10 seconds or less. I'll talk about that toward the end of the video. In either case, folks, welcome. So I will uh, first give you information about um, Zorin on DistroWatch just using their website. I'll make this bigger. And uh, if you don't know too much about Zorin, especially for your Microsoft users. Again, they did an update of uh, 727, so a couple of four days ago. So uh, it is a Linux type of OS, Debian and Ubuntu based. Uh, popular flavors in the Linux world. Out of the country of Ireland, offer two desktops, the GNOME and the XFCE. XFCE desktops, again, are more forgiven on older computers, but you can certainly run them on modern. The category is beginners. So for you Windows users, this is a great segue to uh, get into uh, playing around with Linux. You can download the uh, live medium also if you know how to burn that onto a USB stick or DVD and test drive it without installing. So it's a great way of checking it out. ZorinOS.com or Zorin.com, your choice, but I'm going to click on Zorin.com. So 16.3 I'll talk about because that's what this release is, and um, I'll resize stuff on the fly, and I'll come back to the web browser and show you all these little tips and tricks that I'm doing. But uh, you can download three flavors. The pro version does come at a cost of 39 US, and then the core and the light this, the core is a GNOME desktop, the light is an XFCE desktop. Both of them are free downloads. The light references basic use for low spec PCs, but you can certainly run them on modern PCs. And I'll give you some tips and tricks on regarding this today. And there's a tool in there called an upgrader tool. So for you folks that are already on Zorin like 15 or 16, you can upgrade without reinstalling everything. That's what I was reading regarding that. And you can find that information right here on this uh, release information. So I'm going to close this. I can use the X in the corner. I can also use Alt and F4. I'll be using Alt and F4 quite a bit today to close down Windows. It's just a quick shortcut. All right. So um, I'll first talk about the upgrader tool. Then I'll talk about software. So I'm going to do UP Upgrade Zorin. The first thing it's going to do is check for updates. If I don't have any, then it proceeds to the next stage. If I do have some updates, I'll have to deal with it. I don't have any updates, so that's a good thing. But I can now upgrade from the standard light version to the Pro by doing the upgrade. Or you can learn more. And again, it comes at a cost of 39 US. I don't know too much about the education light, so anyways, you get the idea. I installed, I installed Synaptic Package Manager only for a reason, not that I needed it. I installed it just to give you a package count. Pieces of software, in other words. However, Synaptic does not contain Flatpak software. 
83,748 packages are listed here. I'm sure you can find a thing or two. Uh, but again, it doesn't contain flatback software. 1905 are installed. Repositories. Where's the stuff coming from? Uh, also in your settings manager, this same box you can open separately. All my videos have timelines and chapters if I'm going too fast for you. And again, I don't recommend watching this on a mobile device. You can also adjust your gear player on your YouTube player, filming in 1920 by 1080. Additional drivers, I don't need any. I'm using an AMD graphics card, but if you're using an NVIDIA graphics card, you may want to go check the release information on 16.3. It supports some of the brand new cards, but I don't need any. Normally, AMD drivers are automatically installed. But more importantly, if you are using an NVIDIA graphics card, you may see a blurb in here and click on that and hit apply. It's that simple. I'm really not going to go into a how to install software using Synaptic, but just be aware you can use Synaptic also to install software. I just brought you in here to let you see that number. But again, it doesn't contain Flatpak software. You can also use Terminal to install software, which I installed the recording software that way. So let's talk about the hamburger menu on this software manager. It's just called software and here's the version number. Again, I can also open this and this box should look familiar to you. I was just using that in Synaptic. It's identical. All right, let's talk about software. We got editors pick recent releases in a whole host of categories. Lots of software. Again, keep in mind this also contains other software besides the stuff coming from, let's say, Zorin. I'll pick on Krita for a second. It just happened to be there. So I have the Snap Store version and the Flatpak version and the Zorin. So there's different locations that these are coming from. If you are concerned about disk space on your hard drive, you may want to take a look at the detailed information if that is a concern of yours. Different screenshots. Not everything is nice looking, but there's quite a few things are in here. Simple install key. Any piece of software is like this. And some you may want to think about some applications you've got in mind. I will show you the stuff in my menus that I also uh, would probably investigate. I'm not saying I would recommend it, but investigate at least some of that software. Because there's a lot of advantages to a lot of different types of software. And let's face it, we do a lot of stuff also online. Okay, but in either case, you have Explore, Installed, and Updates in here. It checked just now. So now I'm going to close this thing and continue. All right, so um, before I get into the file manager and the web browser tips, I will just go through the menu real quick. We have a really nice search feature here. Just start typing and it starts looking. We have, I'll talk about these side of the house in a second, but more importantly, you have software that's already installed and I'll point to the stuff that I installed. I installed Kate the text editor and um, that's all I installed on this menu. The rest of the stuff comes already installed. I do recommend that you utilize the screenshot tool whenever you're making changes to anything that has numbers on your system. You have three choices, entire screen, active window, and select. The uh, entire screen, it, it will take your picture of your wallpaper and everything else on the screen. It usually makes for a bigger file. Active window just takes a picture of the, the well, the active window, but not the tool itself. Does that make sense? So I, I encourage that you use screenshots on any Linux distribution. All right, where did I leave off? I left there. So you got terminal emulator, text editor, regular text editor. Again, I added Kate. And uh, the only reason I did that, I usually, uh, I'm going to be, maybe showing this toward the end of the video and I'll blow up the uh, the text on it. That's why I like to use Kate so I can make the text larger for you. That's what I mean by blowing it up. Your uh, CD DVD burning up and a uh, couple of games. These did get installed automatically. Um, it does come with GIMP installed, but I installed Dark Table and the rest of these were installed by default. I'll open up GIMP for a second. GIMP is like Photoshop if you've never used that. I use it heavily. All of my thumbnails on my YouTube site are done with GIMP. And my current channel and my previous channel of over 460 videos, I use GIMP. I also use this to edit photos, create icons, 
there's a lot of things you can do with GIMP. So um, GIMP is also used by a lot of professionals. It's like Photoshop, like I pointed out. There's uh, manuals and um, it's very nice tools in here. You can convert images, resize images. You can do a lot of things with GIMP. Funny name, but very powerful tool. You also have Darktable that you can install. I installed that just for a quick reference. That's for you folks that like to do photography and stuff. All right, there's lots of choices in your software store though, is what I'm pointing at. All right, so I'm gonna to go to the internet category. Firefox is your standard web browser. You can install others. Uh, email client and Office. LibreOffice 7.5. You can save it in Microsoft formats. Settings I'll get into a little bit later and then system. So we have a couple things in here. I added uh, Synaptic and I also added uh, Hard Info. It comes up as System Profiler and Benchmark. This is for your graphical folks. They like to see system information in a graphical way. Now you can see that I have Zorin 16.3, the latest. My CPU, how much RAM I have in KIB format. My motherboard, graphics card, and what I'm filming in today, 1920 by 1080. I am capable of doing 4K, but I use that for compatibility reasons today. My brother, printer, which is online currently. And a litany of tools, including benchmark stuff. This, again, is made by Hard Info, and you can install that through the software store if you want this. All right. Um... Task Manager, Thunar is your file manager. I'll open that in a second. There's a tour here that normally starts when you install this. And then uh, this goes to the Windows app support, which you can add. However, you probably find that Linux has a lot of software tools. All right, and then of course, XFCE. So category over here, I just added an icon to my username. Zorin New is just a made up name, but uh, that's the user that I termed at for the install. Shortcut to my folders, another shortcut to the software store, and of course you have that also down here. Then we have a um, shortcut to the appearance, the lock screen, and the multifunction key, which I'll show you how to create in about seven seconds a little bit later. So let's stop out at uh, appearance for a section. If you're just in a hurry, you can look at your layouts, and if you do have the pro, you'll get some additional ones. Themes, Really quick themes, light or dark or mixed, and uh, desktop icons. Keep in mind, if you activate these things, uh, you do have a perfectly good file manager with, with most of this stuff already. Here's the trash can, home folder, my file system, and devices. In other words, mounted volumes. Your choice. Fonts, don't like the 10, change it to a 12 or bigger. Just don't go crazy. <laughs> Possibly a screenshot in this case, maybe. Got a good memory? Well, sometimes it's a good to have screenshots. All right, let's talk about settings for a second. I'm not gonna walk through every single box in here, but you've got some choices in the appearance section. You've got different style sets, don't like the light, go with the dark, that kind of thing. Icon sets, again, screenshots is what recommended, what I would recommend. Another shortcut to those font things. Make them bigger or smaller. Probably going with bigger in most cases. All right, desktop. Here's the standard wallpaper that I'm currently using. This is the actual default wallpaper. Okay. The icon sets are a lot smaller than I'm currently using. All right, just wanted to let you see where the tool is. And here's another shortcut to add those extra icons. All settings. The mouse pointer that I'm currently using is non-standard. I will point out to the ones that you do get installed. Now, if you decided to install 16.3, uh, I also recommend going through the language support and making sure that all your language stuff is installed. I'll skip over menu, editor, and notifications. On the panel, I'll get into last. I'll show you how to edit some of the stuff on the panel. Screensaver, just the time, or which one? Window Manager, for your folks that like to play, screenshots recommended. But if you wanted to move that X to the uh, other side of the house, you can certainly do that. 
and the rest of these keys. I'll move it back to where it was, or I can even stick it over here to be weird. Well, let's not get weird. All right, let me continue. A little humor there, folks. Is there an appearance? Another shortcut. Same as this. All right, Bluetooth and advanced network. I'm going to skip over. This is GNOME disk utility. Here's where you change your screen resolution. Don't forget about the, uh, as you can see, I can film in 4K if I wanted to. And then also refresh rates. If you hit the apply key and it stays black for more than six seconds, don't touch anything on your keyboard. Allow it to time out. If it hasn't done so in two minutes, then take other action. But in general, it's looking for you to acknowledge the new screen resolution and refresh rate are acceptable. In other words, you can see them. If you can't see them and the screen is black, don't be clicking. And whatever you do, don't panic. Give it some time to time out. All right, keyboard application shortcuts. You may want to be familiar with some of them. I've been using Alt F4 for a lot of things today. Alt F4 closes windows. Mouse and touchpad, acceleration, sensitivity, behavior, and themes. The ones that come installed by default are this one, that one, the little red guy, it's non-resizable, red glass, and white glass. These are all installed in USR share icons. This one is installed in dot icons on my local user. The other ones have root permissions. This one does not. When I get into the file manager, I'll show you exactly where it's installed. And I have plenty of videos on my YouTube site if you want to install additional ones. I'll even give you a link to get, well, approximately 800 of these kind of things on my YouTube site. Power manager. You may want to check that button to maybe ask. That way it does something like this. All right, moving along. Printers, mine was auto-discovered. I'm fond of brother printers for many reasons. It doesn't use the, most of the time, if not always, it doesn't use my, my precious RAM on my computer like some printers do. You can certainly add and follow the directions, but mine is auto-discovered because it's a network printer. It's kind of a nice touch. Uh, the sound is, you can click it here, and you can also walk down here on the panel and click it, click it down there, sorry. Audio mixer, it's the same box. Um, where am I at? Uh, firewall is GuffW, it comes turned off, you can activate that, and if you do some file sharing, don't forget about rules. Software updater, you just click, and it up checks for updates. That's the same thing in your software store, just have to click that right there. Didn't want to get off on a tangent, but I wanted to point that out. Software and updates is the same thing as that box that I was clicking in, in Synaptic and also in the software. This is the same dialog box. Here's your upgrade tool again. And if you're going to allow somebody to use your computer, especially children, you want to more likely create a user. That way they have their own bookmarks and stay out of yours and also your folders. Always a good idea to create an extra user if you're going to allow somebody else to use your computer. Uh, other than that, I'm going to hit close. And um, I already covered this and the search feature. Let's open up the file manager. Give you a couple of tips in there. So you can resize the window by double tapping, or you can use the old fashioned way. You can also resize icons my way or the system way. I'm going to show you a couple of tips in the file manager that may be of value to some. Resizing icons my way, I'll make this thing the smallest. That's the smallest icon, and this is the largest, and I'll go in between. All right, so you can click zoom in and out in normal size. You can also hold down the control key and hit plus, 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 or hold down the control key and hit minus, 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 minus to make things bigger, 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 or smaller. A little bit more humor there. Normal size is control zero, not all, control zero. I'm gonna substitute the plus, the minus, and the zero, but still use the control key. Holding down the control key, scrolling up on my computer mouse, scroll wheel, computer mouse scroll wheel, to scroll up, to scroll back, and in between. Comes in handy for thumbnails. So speaking of, I am going to reduce this down and you can see the current wallpaper. So I'm gonna click on Mr. Mushroom over here. And right click and set it as wallpaper. Now Mr. Mushroom is our, or Mrs. Mushroom, whichever you prefer, uh, is the wallpaper. How about Computer Guy? 
as computer guy. Now, computer guy is my new wallpaper. He's kind of looking in his machine. He's wondering if his backups are being done. And I'll talk about that over here a little bit later. So I have uh, shortcuts to my folders. I also have some shortcuts that I can do because the behavior, not yours, of this file manager is set for double click. So let me give you some demos on that. I'll click this weird um, photo here and hit the space bar. These guys are skateboarding on top of a building. Got that from wallpaperswide.com. I'm cycling through the wallpapers by hitting the space bar. I can use Alt and F4 to get out of this. Also, this is an image viewer. Alt and F4 it is. Alt and F4 closes windows. So I can double click on it and get the same effect. I'll use the standard X this time. Under documents, maybe you're coming from the Microsoft world. I'll make this a little bit larger for you. That is a text document. And that would be a typical text document in Windows, Microsoft Windows. These are the same. I, I don't have to use an extension with a text document. Linux understands this. This is a text document. So is this. It's the same file, actually. However, if I was using this on Microsoft Windows, I would probably put a .txt on it. Now, let me give you some examples of using PDFs. Here's a printer manual. Hitting the space bar to get a preview of that, and it's currently sitting at 134%. Holding down my control key, scrolling backwards, makes this smaller. I can go as low as 5%. I let go of the control key and it stays in that 5% and now I'm going page by page. And now I'm going to hold the control key and zoom back in by holding the control key and scrolling forward. I'm just zooming in on this area here only. I can make this 195% uh, if I want or scroll back out. I let go of the control key and now I can scroll to the next pages and scroll back in. Holding down the control key Scrolling forward, scrolling back, scrolling forward, scrolling back. Okay, Alt and F4. So you can do that using that method. All right, I have some devices here. What is a device? A device in Linux is a internal hard drive, an external hard drive, a USB stick or thumb drive. Some people have different names for things. And also your file system. This is the typical Linux file system for Zorin. This mouse pointer isn't this mouse pointer is not installed in USR share and icons. Your other ones are installed there, the ones that come with the system. My mouse pointer is installed in a hidden folder in here. So I'm going to use a control H, which is a very uh, common command for modern Linux file managers, control H to show hidden files and folders. I self-created this dot icon folder and, and dumped my mouse theme in there. I normally install seven or eight of them at a time if I'm playing. And I delete them just like a folder. So there's only two locations that most mouse pointers get installed, if not all, in all Linux distributions. Dot icons for your locally logged in user or USR share icons. I have those videos on my YouTube site. You can watch just about any of them and get the same information. All right, I have an internal backup drive. It's actually an NVMe. Kind of looks like a big fat memory stick that's kind of located on the bottom of my motherboard if you don't know what an NVMe is. I have an external hard drive, USB backup drive that has currently three backups of my documents, music, and pictures because this tool is what produces that. I'm gonna delete them and come back to this a little bit later. Or shall I just do this while we're talking? So this file is located right in here and I'm not really gonna go into that today, but I just wanna let you see what it looks like. I'll open this in Kate. This is one of the reasons I like Kate. I can blow things up for you if I'm teaching stuff like this. It's just four lines of code. It's not really code, it's just text. And that file is set to be ran as a program. And that's a shortcut. Right click, send to, create a shortcut. Now I'll let you see what it does. It's going to create three folders identical to my documents, music, and pictures using rsync. So let's talk about rsync while it's actually copying, and we'll come back to this. Let's talk about backup programs, because if you go into your Zorin menu and type in back, 
It's not there. There's no backup tools. So I do encourage that you install a backup program or use rsync. One of the two, your choice. But I want you to let you see that a lot of your backup tools use rsync. Even TimeShift uses rsync under default conditions. But in general, install something to back up your personal files. Let's face it, you never know when you have a data disaster. You got a drive that maybe you're using a really old hard drive that you're installing Zorin on and the thing fails. And you don't have a backup of your personal files. Always a good idea. Can I create more folders if I have maybe videos or some other subfolder maybe that I have personal stuff? Absolutely. Watch my video on rsync and you can also install grsync for the graphical type of way of doing this. One folder at a time, usually. But in either case, I have a video on that. All right, let's talk about some shortcuts in your web browser. I'll use the Zorin OS first. I'm sorry, the Zorin website first as my demo. I'm gonna resize this innards or the information in this web page from 110% to 30% on the fly. What am I doing here? I'm doing the exact same thing I'm doing in the file manager, holding down the control key while using my computer mouse scroll wheel to scroll backwards and forwards multiple times to 500% and then somewhere in between. Scrolling back and forth. Hopefully not making you sick. All right. Most people like to be north of 100% to make things bigger. We can also do control T to open up tabs. I can also use middle click to close tabs. I'll talk about the middle click in a second. I'm going to open up Google and look for Google News as my example of doing middle click tabs. We all know, well, most folks know how to do standard tabs. You can hit the plus key if you like too. And you can use the conventional X to close. But I'm gonna use Google News and I'm not gonna leave this area. I'm just gonna click on articles and they're gonna open in the background for me to read later. A lot of people are looking through the news and they wanna open up an article to read later and they wanna just continue. So what I'm gonna do is open those using middle click. What is middle click? A lot of you folks have these um, scroll wheels on your computer mice that have a switch underneath them. And if you, um, I'm gonna try to get my microphone close to my mouse, and I'm, I want you to listen for this. I'm not pushing my right or left button. I'm pushing straight down on my scroll wheel. All right, with that said, I'm gonna open up tabs in the background here, and they'll just load while I'm middle clicking. So I'm gonna find some articles. Here's the first one, and it's loading. Here's another one, and it's loading, and I'm gonna keep scrolling. Third, fourth, fifth. Now I have a bunch of these loading in the background and then I can read them independently later. Okay, I can also resize the innards on the fly. That one is set for 30% and this one is now set for 230. 30%, 230. They're independent. I'll set that one to 60% and that one to 190. 140, 100%, 190, 60%, 30%, and 230. Now I'm gonna close these tabs using middle click. All I have to do is be within the region of this box. I don't have to hit the X. My pointer just has to point anywhere in this surface area and then middle click like that. I'm closing tabs this way. What happens when I point to this last one? It closes the web browser. So there's some tips for you regarding that. All right, let's talk about um, creating buttons. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually I'm going to change the wallpaper. It's a little distracting to uh, the standard ones. I'll go with uh, backgrounds and use that one. So I'm going to create this one first. And I have it sitting here on the panel, so what I'm going to do is remove it. It came off of one of these. So what is this again? It's a multifunction key. It's same as this one right here. 
So erase that. Right click, create launcher. Type in LOG, LOG. Second item, create launcher log. Hit the create button twice, once, twice. There you go. That was about seven seconds. Right click, open with create launcher on panel. Puts it in the corner. My subscription key is probably covering that and I do recommend that you subscribe. Right click, move. Anywhere you see a red line, drop it. If you want to. Or you can just leave it in the corner. Stick it in front of here. This still does the same job. Now moving into the opposite end, probably it's not necessary, but you can do that though, if you want to. I will move it back. And if I delete this one, again, these are the ones you can place anywhere on your desktop. But if I delete this one, this one's still active. My icons are set for enormously large, and that's done through here, through here, icon size, just FYI. You can also turn on your regular system icons while you're in here. These are web-based icons. I'll show you how to create one of these in a couple seconds. One goes to Facebook, one goes to Amazon. So let's create one of these. Right-click, create URL link, universal resource link. Type in a name. What's in a name? Well, it's whatever you want to call it. I'll call this one Amazon. The URL, in other words, the website, www.amazon.com. Now the website has to exist and it has to be valid. I'm going to just accept the generic icon. Okay, just to let you see how fast I can do this. All right, now I'm going to erase that. Right click, create URL link. So if you are wanting your fancy icons to go with these uh, things, um, the, the minimum requirements, of course, are just the website and the name. So I satisfied those two things. The icons I can click on and pick anything from the system. You can also click in here and bring in your own image files. Whether you downloaded those off the internet and put it in a folder, it's all up to you. I'm going to use the butterfly. All right. But I'm going to click this and click all icons and type in AMA because there is an Amazon icon and don't expect that for all your websites. But more importantly, I'm done with that link. So it took me longer to explain it. Facebook, same deal. I'm going to create one of those. So again, so right click on your screen, create URL link and uh, Spelling doesn't matter either for the name. You can just call it F if you like. Takes me longer to type that. I'm gonna use, um, and all icons. There's Facebook right there. Well, you can use emojis. Mr. Kissy Face looks cool. Just joking, folks. Gotta have a little humor when you do so something like this. Anyways, there's Facebook. It's up to the web browser to keep tabs on the login information. Um, okay, panel bar time. Last thing, promise. Well, actually, I'll, if you're interested, I'll show you what this does. Or did, did I already execute that? I must have. Uh, anyways, my backups are finished. So, again, you can watch uh, my video on rsync and grsync for Zorin. And you'll find that video. Trust me, it's already loaded. All right, let's talk about the panel something more current. So screenshots are recommended. So let me do a screenshot of this real quick as a demo. SC. You can use keyboard equivalent. Now we can do entire screen. It takes a picture of all my icons, my wallpaper and the panel and this box right here, but not the tool. It, it never takes a picture of the tool itself. Entire screen makes for a big file. But if you want to do that and have plenty of disk space, then use that. Active window just takes a picture of this box. Select region is, well, that's what it is. You select it. I usually do this without the mouse pointer, but what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put this box right on top of it. I'll let you see that it doesn't take a picture of itself. I'm going to do active window, hit OK, and save to the desktop. And there's the file. It's just got today's date and time. And you can see there's no picture of the tool itself. But I can clearly see all the numbers. So let me talk about the settings. 
Most people don't play with this, but I'm going to show it to you anyways. You can reduce this down to that size, providing you have that turned on. It just makes enough room for these icons. If you turn it off, on the other hand, you'll get this. If I go to, to one, it will just be a partial icon. It won't go to zero. Okay, it's letting you know that there's something here. But as soon as I turn this back on, it makes enough room for all the current icons. However, most people don't resize that. You want a little bit of space for open programs. But again, it's up to you. How many rows are you allowed? Six, which is totally excessive. And it even shifts your icons on your, on your desktop around to make room for this large panel. And that's number of rows. I'm going to go back to one. Row size. Again, screenshots are recommended. Row size. The height of this bar. Also adjustable. All right, so what's the next item that I'm going to talk about is uh, automatically hide the panel. The panel, again, is this thing. Never self-explanatory. It never hides it. And always. Always would be literally always. And then you have to take your mouse and it'll bring it up. Right-click panel preferences. What's intelligently? Intelligently means that if your web browser or whatever thing is a full screen, I'll use the file manager for a second and go full screen, the panel auto hides. As I make the window smaller though, as soon as my, um, I'm going to use the mouse pointer special effect here. So as soon as the bottom of this line touches a little bit below this, this will auto hide itself. I'm going to grab a hold of this and let you see what I'm talking about. That's what intelligently hide does. It does the same thing in a web browser. So I'll go full screen on this one. You get the idea? Okay, that's the only difference. As I resize the window itself, since I have a gap in here, this returns. That's the only difference. Right click, panel, preferences. I'll put this back to default. Just keep in mind, it's set for never. All right, I'm gonna skip over appearance and go over to items. So for you folks that like to play, may I highly recommend a screenshot of this. But I'm going to take the Zorin menu, this guy here, and I'm going to move it completely from left to right by clicking that and using the arrow key. Again, screenshots are highly recommended when you do this. Okay, now what I have on my left is my web browser. Okay, right click, panel, preferences, items. Grab a hold of that Zorin menu and go back to where default is. Now it's back to where it was. Okay, double check. So again, if you're wanting to know a little bit about rsync or grsync, watch my videos for that. And uh, now that you uh, know how to create one of those in a couple seconds and some web link icons and some tips in your file manager, web browser, and a little bit about software, thank you for watching.